warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Mashallah, there is more microphones. Where are you, sister? On the right hand side, mashallah. I didn't know there were four microphones. Yes, sister, most welcome. My name is Farah Iliana Binti Bahari. I am a 17 years old high school student. Uh, I am asking behalf on my non-Muslim friend through the Facebook and I will record the answer for him. Uh, he asked, if a non-Muslim do all of the, all of the, all of what his religion teach him, yet he know nothing about Islam and then he died, will he go to the hell too? Thank you. The sister asked a question that if a non-Muslim follows everything according to his or her religion and follows exactly and doesn't know about Islam, will he go to heaven or hell? That is the question. Point number one, that I have given a talk on comparative religion, similarities between Islam and Christianity, and I have proved to the Christian that when you want to follow, I have proved to the people that when you want to follow a religion, don't look at the followers, go and study the scripture. So when you study the scripture or Bible, you come to know that there are many similarities between Islam and Christianity. Islam is the only non-Christian faith which makes in an article of faith to believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. No Muslim and the Muslim, if he does not believe in Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. We believe that he was one of the mightiest messengers of God. We believe that he was born miraculously without any male intervention. We believe that he was the Messiah, translated Christ. We believe that he gave life to the dead with God's permission. We believe that he healed those born blind and lepers with God's permission. And I can keep on quoting, but the difference is that most of the Christian believe that Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, claimed divinity. If you read the Bible, there is not a single unequivocal statement in the complete Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or why he says worship me. If any Christian can point out a single unequivocal statement, a single unambiguous statement from anywhere in the Bible where Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, himself says that I am God or why he says worship me, I am ready to accept Christianity. I am not speaking on behalf of my other Muslim brothers and sisters. I am putting my head on the guillotine. So what I tell that when you read the Bible and the Quran, you come to know that the Bible says believe in one God. The Bible says Jesus was messenger of God. The Bible says that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last and final messenger. So then you have to follow the Prophet. You have to believe in one God. It is the church which is not following the Bible. Same thing with the Hindus. I say you read your scripture. Don't follow your scholars. Read the scripture. If the scholar matches with the scripture, you follow the scholar. Same thing with Islam. If a scholar or a mufti or a sheikh or a ustad gives you a fatwa which is against Quran and Sunnah, then you throw away the fatwa. Follow Quran and Sunnah. So same with the other religions. When we do a comparative study, we come to know that even if the scriptures of all the other religions besides the Quran, they have been changed, even in the change form, all the religious scriptures of the major world religions say that God is one. They say that the last and final messenger is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All of them say that when you pray, you have to do the sujood. Most of the scriptures, they follow the basic teachings of Islam. So you tell your friend that to see my cassette, similarity with Islam and Christianity, similarity with Islam and Hinduism, concept of God in major world religions, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, various scriptures, and you find out that your scriptures say that you have to follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And if you're following your scripture, you have to follow Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Now coming to your question, hypothetical question, that suppose there is a Christian or a non-Muslim who has no knowledge of Islam, what will happen to him? Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fusila, chapter number 41, verse number 53, Allah says in the Quran that, Allah says, Sanurim ayatina fil afaqi, wa fi anfusihim, hatta yatabayna lo annohlaq. That soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizons and into the soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth. Allah says that He will take it upon Himself, that He will prove to every human being before He dies that Allah is one. So Allah Himself delivers the message to each and every human being before he or she dies. So on the day of judgment, no non-Muslim, no disbeliever will ever tell to Allah that I did not give the message of Islam. It is our job to do dawah. But whether we do dawah or not, Allah says in the Quran that he will directly give the message of Islam 
to every individual human being. So on the day of judgment, the Quran doesn't say that the disbelievers will object to Allah. Why didn't I get the message? They will say we were wrong. Please forgive us. Give us one more chance. So if you do not believe in Allah and you do shirk and you do not believe in Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, on the day of judgment, in the Akhirah, you shall not go to Jannah. Hope that answers the question. How are we going to tackle this problem? Because um, uh, there is unity of people uh, that people are divided uh, due to these um, petty issues. And um, my question is the way how we want to tackle this uh, political issue and people points of view. Okay, that's all. Thank you, Dr. Zakinai. Sister, that's a very important question that today the Muslim Ummah is divided and one of the reasons is because of political issues. So how do we solve this? Sister, you vote a politician which is more closer to Quran and Sunnah. If you are in a democratic country and if you have a choice to vote, 